this blouse is begging to be taken out. So it is time to sew the skirt and finish this outfit. everyone and welcome back to this channel and welcome back to a new video in the series on Victorian sewing and we are almost done I know I always say that but this time we are really almost done I only need a one more garment and that is the skirt and then this outfit is done and ready to be taken outside so in this video I'm going to do things a little bit different normally I start with an antique pattern and an antique fashion plate and then I make it well, this time I'm drafting the pattern myself, but I'm still using an antique way of doing it. I found a book on archive.org from 1897 and it's a pattern drafting manual that was actually used in those times. So that's still pretty cool. If you don't know what archive.org is, I'm linking the book that I'm using down below and do go check out that website. There are so many cool books on there and they're a great source of information. I've already found more books than I can ever go through. So definitely check it out. But before I start pattern drafting, we need a fabrics. I got all of these and I only know where half of it came from. So I found this stuff and this is a crinoline tie fabric it's very stiff and I'm going to use it to reinforce the bottom of my skirt actually make it stand out a lot so first time using this so that's going to be interesting and then my next fabric is this and this is a bed sheet so I'm hoping that there's enough fabric if not I have a plenty more bed sheets in my stash I can use but I like that this is a hundred percent cotton so I'll make a nice interlining and this bed sheet actually came with a very pretty like, lace border so i'll definitely be reusing that on something so nice fabric for that and then my upper fabric which is still a little bit damp because i just washed it is this super pretty fabric and you need to see this slightly more in move yes so this is a fabric that i found in my stash and i don't know where i got it I may have bought it in a shop or found it at a thrift store or gotten it from someone in the past. I do not remember. What I do know is that the shiny pattern on this fabric color matches so well with the jacket I made before. So this is going to be a full on coral outfit and I can't wait to see it come together. So very happy with this too. Now I need your help. I am almost done with this project and I'm thinking about some ideas for comic projects. I obviously love, love, love the late 1890s and I'll definitely be making more outfits for this, but I also want to explore some of the other periods that I've worked on before. One of them is Regency. Um, that's kind of the reason how I got into historical sewing. I love Edwardian. I still have that very awesome picture that I'd like to recreate at some point. Um, but then also I really love like 1950s stuff. There are so many options. Let me know what kind of stuff you would like to see in my videos and I'll definitely read each and every one of your comments and take them into consideration when picking a new project. Now, I think it's time we start pattern drafting because we need to get this show on the road. So let's get started. Okay, so before I can actually start my pattern, I need to uh, take my measurements. I already did this before, but you know, then I didn't have my blouse finished and that is definitely going to make a difference in how tight the skirt can be. And the last thing you want is a skirt that ends up being too small because you forgot to measure some of your layers, especially with Victorian wear, there are so many layers you need to think of. So make sure that your outfit is done as far as possible before you take the measurements for your skirt so you know exactly how it's supposed to fit. Now I have picked uh, this pattern and it has three pieces as you can see and then obviously it'll be used on double fabric so the measurements i need for this skirt are the waist the hip the side length to the hip and the full side length length in front and length in back so sounds pretty straightforward so let's get those measurements done okay you should be able to see properly what i'm doing here Normally you would tie something around your waist to make sure that you are measuring in the right spot. Now I already have the tie from my blouse that I can use so that makes it a bit easier. And here I have my measuring tape with inches and centimeters. 
And today we're using inches because the pattern is in inches. So let's see. This is 30 and a half inches. Let's write that down. And that is actually a 5.5 inch difference with the original pattern. So that's going to be interesting. And then the side length to the hip, the measure, the side length to the hip in the pattern is using six inches. So let's see where that's for me. That is here, which kind of makes sense because that is where my bum pad is. So we'll stick to the same measurements of the pattern. And then let's see that comes to 40 inches. So I kind of feel like I could use some more padding here to kind of get the same um, proportions of the pattern, but for now, I'm just going to stick to this. Okay, and then full sight length. Now I'm wearing shoes with the tiniest heel because I don't have any pretty Victorian boots yet. Now it is always a bit hard to do yourself, so what I always do is do like an estimate. That seems to be like, let's see what the pattern says. 40, yeah, I'm a bit taller than this lady. It's like 42, yeah, 42, 42 inches. And length in the front. I think it's going to be pretty similar from what I've seen in my experience. Oh, it's actually a bit shorter. 41, 41 and a half. Yeah. Okay, now we have all the measurements we need. So it is time to uh, start making the pattern. So I need to get some space on this floor so I can actually uh, roll my pattern paper out. Okay, so I'm back in my normal clothing and ready to start this pattern. But first I kind of want to explain a little bit about proportions in historical garments. So uh, this skirt is from 1897. The pattern is from that time. And uh, this is uh, the one. It's very, very nice. Um, now with this pattern, it's good to know that it requires all the undergarments that I've made. You can't just make a skirt like this and, you know, pretend it's going to look the same as it did back then if you don't have a proper undergarment. So that is always the best place to start before you start measuring yourself. Now I've measured myself and I made a little thing here. So you can see the measurements that they had back then according to the proportions and their proportion was a bust of 36 and minus 36 and a quarter, uh, hip 40 and a quarter and minus 40. So mine's slightly smaller, but we can uh, we can fill that up with a petticoat. And then the waist is actually a four inch difference. Now I'm not going to do anything to that because um, I'm still new to course of wearing. So I'm going to leave my proportions as they are because I feel like they actually have some nice proportions to them. Um, but maybe in the future when I'm used to lacing down a little bit more or, you know, make some more padding everywhere because still figuring that out too. But for now, I think this will be a nice like almost hourglass shape proportion. So we're going to leave it like this. But yes, it's very important that when you make historical garments and you really want to get that like silhouette of those times, it's always good to explore a little bit, look into those books, read, read up a bit on proportions. Um, for instance, the book that I used had a, a long list of proportions, so you can actually check with your measurements and maybe change your padding and things a bit if you want to get that shape that they had. So that is a tip. So after I started fiddling with this pattern a little bit, I realized it was a lot more complex than I thought at first. So I went to my Instagram followers. If you don't follow me yet, I'll link my Instagram down below. And I asked him, do you want to see a step-by-step -step of this pattern or do you just want to know the difficulties? And the answers were almost 50-50. So I decided to do a bit of both. So coming up is a step-by-step -step explanation of the pattern 
on scale. So it should be easier to see for all of you. And then if you just want to know the difficulties with this pattern, in case you're attempting it yourself and you are running into the same problems as I did, you could just zip through to the end. I will include time codes down below so you can just check them out and see what you want to see. Now, time to start this pattern because uh, there are quite some steps. Okay, so in order to start, you need some materials. I always have several rulers because some are easier to use for certain things. I have my French curve for all the pretty curves. And I made this adorable little ruler, which is a one to four scale of a normal inch ruler. First, we're going to start with draw a line from A to C. Well, A is at top here and C is at the bottom. So we're going to use this a ruler. Draw up the first line. Then you square it. And this is point A. And then A to C is the front length. And we measure that as 41 and a half inch. So here we're using the scaled one. And then this is point C. So this is front length and it's going to be center front. Cross that off. Next, A to B is five inches or one inch less than measure taken. Now I am using the measure that was given in the pattern. So mine's going to be five. A to B is five. So. Five, and that is a B. Then it says square out lines B and C. Okay. Okay, and then square out B and a square out C. Another point done. So far, it's fairly easy. B to G. So B to G is half of hip measure and our hip measure was 40 so half is 20 and that is on the squared line so 20 inches that way here we have a g okay we got b to g done next one's def is one eighth of hip measure that is five so they're all five inches apart, DEF. Let's see, first. And third. And then we have D, E, F. C to V is a three eighth of entire hip. So three eighth, so that's fifteen. Let's see, fifteen. Yes, it's V. Another one done. So yeah, this right goes really fast. From E to H, E to H. Oh, that's like the point somewhere there. And V to M is one inch. Ah, okay, so it's a point back. Okay, so E to H is an inch. E to H. And V to M. Okay, another one done. Draw a line from M through H. M through H to J. M through H. Okay. And this is J, but is that on? Oh, okay, got that. So this is the confusing. They say draw a line from M through H to J, but J is not there yet. You make J on the next point. So let's short arm of square rest at A and long arm at H. 
So we're going up like this. Let's see. Yes. And then you make a little thingy there. And word. This is point J. A to R is one fourth waist. Well, first we need to connect J and A for that. Okay, and then it's seven and a half inch. So here, and this is R. S to E is one inch. Okay, so this is one of the things that you need to figure out for yourself again. So S to T is actually the dart here, but it doesn't say how far, where, what, how long, nothing. So what I do often is I try to gauge like how far apart things are. So it feels like it's on like one third of this. And since this is seven and a half inch, it's two and a half inch. So it would start at two and a half inch. And keep in mind, you can always move the dart. If you've made a mock-up and you know if it fits or not, you can always move it around. And then that is a one inch. So this would be S and this would be T. Now for the length of the dart, I feel like it's shorter than half. And this was five inches, so it's maybe like two inch. So we'll keep it at that for now. Two inch. And then draw your dart. We have a dart. Another thing done. Apply sight length measure from R to H M. Okay, so the sight length we had was 42. So let's measure how much this is. 36 and a half. need to make a little curve. Okay, now we measure the sight length. We have 30. So we got 43 minus the 1. So here is new M. This is your new Side length. Another one done. Square across from M to W. We're going to use that new M and then a square across. And then M to W is the same as C to M. C to M was 14, so this is 14. And that is W. Okay. Draw a line from W through N, F to K. N, F to K. Okay, so we're going to do the whole long line thing again. And this way we're making point K. Don't worry, we're almost there. Okay, another line. Play short arm of square at J. Ah, and the long one at F and square back from J for point K. Okay, so we're squaring back again. And then here, yeah, point K. K to N is the back length measure. Okay, in the back length measure we measured and that was 42. So 
here we go again. 30, maybe I should make this ruler longer. And then here, we have N. The back length measure of square out from N. N to O is half of hip measure. Hip measure was, of course it's 20, N to O is 20 inches. And K to P is three quarter of the distance from N to O. So this is the hard part. This is the part where you need to pay attention. Now, this pattern feels like there are parts missing. There is no explanation how to get to point Q. I feel like the pattern is rounded out obviously because it's skirt so there's no explanation of that and there is like a small issue in trying to get to point p so pay some attention this is how i solved it and i feel like this kind of makes sense so this is how you can fix it now it says k to p is three quarters of the distance from n to o now n to o is here and then k to p is three quarter of that distance so first we go measure this n to o is 20 so it's 15 inches what we need from k to p this is 15 inches now k is not squared from now p is not squared from k so i did find out that o is that O is a 90 degree angle. So that makes it easy to go from there. Make an angle. Draw it all the way up. Okay. Now we still don't know where P is going to be. Let's see. Because P is also not a 90 degree angle. So we need to figure this out ourselves. Now it is actually quite easy. So this length we measured at 42 inches because that was the length that we measured for the back and the side of the skirt. So since we don't have a train, the back is going to be exactly the same. So this should be 42 inches. Here we have 30, and then another 12, and then voila, through some deduction, we can draw point P. Okay, but now we are still missing something. This bit, here we have a missing point Q and the end of the explanation has been reached. So we need to figure this out ourselves. So uh, what I did is I measured to see if the distance between point J and R was the same as point J and Q, and it does seem like it. Now keep in mind, this is not 100% foolproof, but since I'm making a, say, sort of mock-up lining, I can always check if it works, and if not, I can always just change it after. But at least we'll get the general gist of things. So what we can do is measure this, and between J and R, it is, Five, a little bit over half an inch. So like 0.6 inch. Okay, 
So we'll do the same on the other side. Okay, so we have like a curve. And then the curve that we made on R, we're going to copy that. So we're going to check where it started here. And then we're going to make the same curve and get it to cross it with the line we just made. Okay, so now we've copied this and we can curve it to point K because it looks pretty curvy on the drawing. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Now we have a pattern. So the one thing we just need to do is get the skirt to look like a skirt. So we're curving the top here and we're going to curve the bottom of the skirt. Okay, and this is going to be cut on the fold, and then you have a total of five pieces. So we will call this number one, number two, number three, and sometimes it helps to put it on your pattern um, in like chalk or something on the wrong side of fabric, so you can always double check. But now we have a working pattern. Only thing left to do is add the seam allowance if you use those on your paper patterns. I like to, but you can always just trace this on your fabric, add your seam allowance, and start cutting it out. I hope this was clear. If there's anything that wasn't quite clear, do not hesitate to ask me. I'd be happy to help you out. For now, I can actually just start cutting out my fabric because I've already drawn this up in uh, like life size. So um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm ready for some uh, fabric cutting. Okay, and I am back in my outfit because it is time to try on the mock-up, aka the lining of the skirt. So let's go see how that fits. I am pretty pleased. So this here in the back, this is all going to be pleated in. So this part has to fit and especially when the length is right, because now obviously it's too long because I have the hem in there. Look at that cool shape and like it fits so well here. Okay, this is definitely a very good pattern. I really, really like it. Like the fit is so nice. You know, this gray doesn't, I don't hate it. It's actually pretty good, but it's going to be even prettier in the actual fabric. So wait, let me go grab the actual fabric. Yeah, so it definitely needs to be shorter because I wanted to make sure it was long enough, so I've added maybe a bit too much. Look at this. It's going to be very nice. Yeah, I can totally see it. Well, I better get back to work so we can actually get this skirt to come together. But uh, it's going well, very well. Now that I've cut out my main fabric, I have taken apart the lining and those layers are going to be like basted together. But before I do that, I have to attach the crinoline, which is like the stiffening that's going to be at the bottom of the skirt. And I'll be sewing that on the lining. So in the end, it's going to be nicely hidden in between the outer fabric and the lining. So that is... So that needs to be done. But first, I'm almost forgetting the most important part of any Victorian skirt, well, at least in my opinion, is pockets. So um, I'll be using a pocket from a Janet Arnold's book. And this is her Patterns of Fashion number two, 1860 to 1940. And this book is a very informative. Um, I'm not sure how easy it is to get it, but I do know that the 
I'm not sure how easy it is to get it now, but if you do find one, snap it up because they are so great. Um, so in this book, I found, let's see where it is. No, no, this one, no, this one, this one. So this is the pocket I'll be using. Um, I've drawn it up in normal size because obviously this is the scale and this is mine. So this one is going to be cut out twice and sewn together here, then the sides and then the bottom. And that way you have the opening here and then the top is going to be uh, attached to the waist with a piece of tape. Now this pocket is here it's made in pink taffeta. We're just going to make it out of cotton. Should be nice and durable. So let's put her away. Let's put her. This by the way is going to be the opening of the pocket. So as you can see it is quite a large pocket and might even fit a pair of scissors in there. You know, a lady needs to be able to have proper pockets, not those abominations of nowadays. So now we have the full pocket shape, and then these sides are going to be sewn together. And then, let's see if we can pin that. So I watched a video on Foundations Revealed where they showed an excellent skirt that had a pocket like this and how it was constructed. So hopefully I'm doing it justice. If not, as long as we have a working skirt, I'm already pretty happy. And then in the end, you're going to sew the bottom and that way it's like a nice open pocket. And then this is going to be attached to the opening this is going to be pleated to make it fit and then there will be a piece of tape over here so and when this pocket is done um maybe i should make two or just one probably won't be using a lot so i'm just going to make one of the bigger ones and um i need to sew on the crinoline so i need to base that and then the layers and then i can start assembling the skirt oh and i need to not forget to make the waistband. Haven't done that yet. That's going to be your waist plus the size of the placket. So don't forget that because otherwise your waistband is going to be too small. And seam allowance, obviously. So uh, I'm going to get sewing and basting and all of these things. And by the time I have all my skirt parts all complete, I will show you how I am assembling the skirt. Okay, after many hours of basting, thank goodness for Netflix keeping me company, um, I have basted all my skirt parts together, all the layers, and then the parts together so they're ready for sewing. If you want to know how to make a placket, you can uh, zoom back to my Victorian petticoat skirt. I will link it up there and down there. So you can check out because there I'll be showing it step by step. Um, yeah, um, I have all the parts, like skirt parts, pocket, have my waistband cut out, so I just need to get sewing and uh, get this skirt together. I'm going to be using my trusted singer again, and um, yeah, I'm ready. Like This skirt needs to be finished. Okay, so for the pocket, I have sewn a side seam and I'm open and I've left an opening the same size as my pocket that has a piece of tape and that's going to be attached to the waistband so a lot of the weight of whatever's in your bag is going to be held by the waistband and not by the side of the skirt. So this is what it's going to look like when it's all sewn in. Now we'll have to turn around the skirt. Okay now here we have the other side of the skirt so here you can see the opening and the pocket needs to be 
here. And as you can see, I've basted the edge of the pocket so it has a nicely finished edge here. And now I simply need to sew it into this opening. And I'll be doing this by hand. Okay, and then by the time that is all sewn, you have a working a large pocket that should be able to fit a lot. Let's see, here are my larger scissors. See, now that is what I call a nice pocket. Okay, I'm going to go finish on the waistband where this is going to be attached and um, finish up the skirt. After a month of sewing, I am finally done with this outfit and I couldn't be happier. It's so comfortable and if people tell you historical costumes can be comfortable, they probably haven't been making them right. So there's that. Like I can move all over. I do however see some things I want to change the next time. For instance, um, if you have watched my video on my blouse, go check it out. I had made the waist tape that sort of holds it together, but it's still too high, like it shows in the back. So I'm definitely going to change that if I make another blouse, I'm going to lower it a little bit, or maybe just add like hooks and eyes so it's going to hold the skirt in place and it can't move around or untuck your shirt. Also, the pocket in this skirt, it fits so much stuff. So this is my new handbag now. And uh, also, good to know, you see it's like a small strip of fabric. I made my own bias tape from the same fabric I made the skirt of because normally you have a braid at the bottom made from wool or cotton, not quite sure. But Usually it's um, like a piece of tape that protects the skirt from wearing. So when you get holes in that, you know, edge, you can just replace it and your skirt looks like new. So it's definitely important to make that if you want your skirts to last a bit longer. Now, when you have a ball gown, I, I'm not quite sure if they always do it on that, but since I want to be wearing the skirt outside on the streets, I want to make sure I'm protecting it in any way I can. And that way it's a lot more economical because you don't have to keep on buying new skirts. Just change it out and fix it. Well, this outfit and these videos have definitely been a challenge, but I feel like I learned so much in the process and I am so grateful to each and everyone who's been following me from the start. Also, if you just joined in, that's fine too. I'm grateful for everyone who's been cheering me on in this whole project and I'm looking forward to starting more projects. So like I asked you before, don't forget to let me know what kind of era you would like to see or if there's a specific technique you would like to see or a way to do things. Um, I'll definitely be doing some more research on what eras I like and uh, I just always love your input. So I know that the videos I make are actually stuff that you wanna see. So for now, I'm just going to be doing my happy dance as usual and uh, continue doing research for my coming up videos. So uh, thank you so much for joining me. I love you guys and I will see you next time. <laughs>